want to talk to you about working with representatives again. Let me let me share with you. Uh, as John was saying, the there are this is the most fun part of the job, you know. And what I can tell you is that what creates this is the fire number. That's why we talk a lot about fire number. In other words, without fire number, you really don't have as many representatives. And the more representatives you have, the more PR names that we collect, the more you can talk about team builder, et cetera. And one of the things I want to just quickly share with you is that, you know, if you feel Cutco is a good job or selling Cutco is a good job, working with Vector is a good job, well, then you would want to be a, a team builder. If you feel selling Cutco is a good job, then you would want to do fire number. So again, definitely don't look at fire number as a have to look at it as, as Jacob was speaking yesterday, as I get to do fire number, you know, I get to impact people's lives. I get to really change how someone thinks about what's, what their option is. You know, think about Jacob's message yesterday and he was a personal recruit of his brother. It's just a, a great thing to be able to think about that. And the, the thing that you're going to enjoy most, that's most fulfilling is the working with the representatives, but you don't get that again, as I mentioned, just like the garden example, you don't get you know uh, arugula uh, or you don't get cucumbers or anything like that without putting in all the work beforehand. And usually there's a lot of work that happens beforehand to get representatives. So let me talk to you about a little bit about working with representatives. I wanna start by working with new representatives. And when you think about working with new representatives, the best analogy I can give you is it's a lot like working with, with uh, it's a lot, not, it's not like working with tellers. You want to have the mindset of when you have a toddler. And I know perhaps you don't have a toddler. Uh, maybe there's some of you that have, have toddlers. But, you know, when you think about a toddler, right, when they take like their very first almost step, and I'm not even going to call it a step, but they're like, they're holding on to like, uh, a, you know, a, a coffee table. And they're just kind of wobbling and they're like almost standing. You're like, oh my gosh, this is so great, right? That, like, that's the feeling. That's kind of how you want to work with new reps. In other words, like everything that they're doing is great. So it's really important to be an encourager. If you can, if you can take anything away from my message today is that if you can encourage a lot this summer, you're going to feel great at the end of the summer and your reps are going to feel great in the moment and produce more. You know, you know the, the company Mary Kay. So the founder, Mary Kay Ash, said, imagine working with everyone. They have like a placard on their chest that says, make me feel special. And really, that's kind of what, what the job is of an assistant or a branch or a district manager. And we don't always do it right, right? We're human, but it's, it's to try to help, under, help, help that person feel special. So the first thing, it's always just kind of keep in mind, like empathize with people as they're sharing, uh, you know, their situation and their story, right? So sometimes, and I'm talking about specifically when there's a challenge, you really want to restate what you hear. So it sounds to me as though you're frustrated that you've made a lot of phone calls. Is that accurate? Right? Or it sounds to me as though you don't think that anyone's buying, gonna buy any Cutco from you ever. Is that, is that accurate? You always wanna get down exactly what you think the problem is. And what that also does is it gives you time and space to come up with a good solution. Right. I think it's also really important, again, that this is whole, all under the, the premise of being supportive. Right? If you can help a lot of people and support them through the process, good things are going to happen. If they just keep doing demos and you're supportive, what's going to happen is they're eventually it's going to click for them. Right? For, some re for some representatives, you know, it clicks their first weekend. But for most representatives, it doesn't click their first weekend. Imagine that it clicks over the course of time for every single person. I just have to support them enough so they continue and then eventually it's going to click for everyone. So that's why it's important to really empathize with their situation, right? Really try to normalize what's happening. You know, hey, you know, what's happened for you so far, that, that's pretty normal. I, I've worked with a lot of reps or I, you know, I started my training group and not everyone, you know, had a $10,000 fast start if that's what happened for you. So I didn't have a $10,000 fast start and I'm pretty good at teaching people how to sell Cutco and I sold a decent amount of Cutco. Hey, I sold 3,500 my fast start. In fact, I didn't even work that hard. Like that's pretty normal. 
So when someone starts beating themselves up, it's really important to kind of normalize what's happened so far. You know, another thing that you can do to support them is actually role play. All right. So, hey, let's, you know, they're struggling with the phone. Hey, let's just quickly role play this and hop on Zoom with them. I just think it's really powerful because you can see tone of voice. You can see body language. You know, there, there was a study done that basically said that 55% of the message that I'm conveying to you or anyone ever is through body language. Write this down also, like never, like don't text other than like, can you make the meeting, right? If, if, if someone says like, no, then I call them, right? So in other words, I only want to, if it's data, think of data. Do you remember the data channel and the PQ channel? You can't communicate emotions through text. It's really important to keep that in mind. So when I'm role playing with someone, what I'm looking for is what are they doing well? And what I'm also looking for is what's the one thing that would change? So don't go in trying to solve everything. And that's just a good strategy in general when you're working with representatives. There's about 25 things that you could solve. Try to just solve one thing. Hey, I noticed that you're saying the approach, but your tone of voice sounds a little monotone. Or, hey, I notice that, you know, I could tell you want good results, but I'm noticing you're kind of straying off the manual. In fact, specifically, what I noticed was this. And so when you're when you're when they're role playing with you, be a, be an active participant as a listener. So you're writing down. Right. And then circle the one thing that they're going to improve. And when they're role playing, try to compliment them as much as they can. Hey, what I noticed that you did really well is you were on the approach. What I noticed that you did really well is that your tone of voice was really good. One of the things I'd like you to consider, though, is looking at the screen. It's really going to help you out a lot. Right. So something as simple as that. So in other words, what I like to role play with people is the phone approach when they're struggling phoning. When they're struggling with closing, I like to role play dropping down with them. And I also like to role play one minute of each section of the demo. So one minute of, let's call it the junk knife page. To be transparent, I don't even know if we do junk knives anymore. But in, in when we used to do a live demo, there was a junk knife page. Then one minute of the features and benefits. One minute of the guarantee. And then one minute of like a paring knife or a trimmer. And what I've found is by one minute, you can tell a lot. One minute may not seem like a long time if you're waiting for someone, but if you're sitting on a hot stove, one minute is a really long time. I think Einstein said something like that. So what I want you to recognize is one minute of role playing, each section, you're going to learn a lot. And one minute of asking for recommendations. That's where you can best support them. You know, very often a new representative, you know, they hear follow the manual, follow the manual, follow the manual, but they don't really understand how to follow the manual. When they get a result that's not the one they want, the next point here is be curious. Okay. Uh, you know, what did you learn on that demo? Or, hey, I didn't, the last three demos, I haven't made a sale. Hey, that's fine. That happens. What did you learn? You know, oftentimes it's like, I don't know. Well, if you did learn something or if you could have learned something, what could you have learned? Another great question to ask, again, it's not in this order, but just of people in general. Right? There's a saying that, you know, what is it that uh, I don't care how much you know until I know how much you care. And so, you know, hey, what do you want to do later in life? And oftentimes the answer is, well, I don't really know. And I say, well, what are some things you're considering? In other words, do you want to be an astrophysicist or a professional baseball player? Well, neither. Okay, great. So we now know two things you don't want to be. What are some things that you may want to be? So I kind of give them two extremes of examples, right? That they probably don't want to be, right? Um, you know, hey, can you tell me more about that? So when they say something like, nobody's buying, hey, can you tell me more about that? or my parents hate this job. Can you tell me more about that? Especially when someone speaks in general or what sounds like exaggerated terms, okay? Nobody's giving me recommendations. 
nobody's answering the phone, right? You can, you, you've heard representatives say that. Can you tell me more about that? For instance, how many people did you call? Well, I called six. <laughs> oh, okay. So I get it. So I've had that happen too. Sometimes I remember I, I called 20 people once they didn't answer. And you know what happened in the next 10 phone calls? Three people answered. So, and, and then again, give analogies. So what made you a good representative is giving analogies and telling stories and empathizing with, with Mr. and Mrs. Jones, right? And do the same thing. So, hey, I'm going to give you an analogy right now, you know, that really helps representatives. You know, imagine I had a deck of cards, right? And every red card and every black card, there's only red and black, right? Sorry, every, every red card was a sale or every red card was a yes on the phone. So the first card I pull up, let's say that was black right? What does it mean the next card is going to be? And they're like, well, it could be red or it could be black. Right. So the next card I pull up is black again. What's the next card going to be? Well, I don't know. I mean, it could be red or it could be black. Right. But the next card's black. Now, what do we know has happened to the probability that the next card's going to be red? Well, it's increased. Right. So what I want you to understand is every time you hear no on the phone, you're more likely to have a yes happen next. Every time you have a no sale, you're more likely to have a, a sale happen next. And that's just something that's really important. That's why in sales, we say that it's, it's a numbers game. Okay, so again, you're, you're helping them through how they're feeling in the moment, right? If I'm feeling, remember we talked about PQ earlier, if I'm feeling like in fight or flight mode, right, that means I'm considering quitting. And when are people in fight or flight mode as representatives? When something didn't go well. And so our job is to try to be there to help them through and help them support, right? Uh, giving perspective on what just happened, I think, is another really key, important thing. You know, they don't know what's good or bad, right? So there's a, there's a manager that was telling me that uh, a division manager was telling me that one of his managers is getting this great result. And he asked him, he said, Am I doing well, <laughs> right? And so it's really important to help them understand like what's normal. And the truth is, you know, there's kind of, there's different times, right? So if someone is like oblivious, if they're like, I just went 0 for 5, I, I usually say, hey, by the way, is everything okay? Like, uh, uh, like tell me more about that. I, I give a sound of a little bit of concern. Like, that's not normal. Let's walk through your demo. Let's walk through who you did a demo for. Okay, we're not going to fire you, but I want to, th that's not normal. It's okay to let people know their results are not normal, or I'm not getting a lot of recommendations. Well, that's not normal. Let's talk about, let, can you just do your approach for me? And oftentimes they're going to say something like, well, I just say what's in the manual. And I'm like, that's great. Go ahead and do it for me. And in, a, in, a, in a less than a minute, again, that one minute is really powerful. What you'll find is that they actually don't know the approach. And that's why they're not getting results. So oftentimes the response really in that case should be something as simple as like, oh, that's why you're not getting the result. You don't know the approach. Why don't you memorize it? Take three minutes right now. Take five minutes right now. Probably more than three minutes. Take five to 10 minutes right now. And can you call me back in 10 minutes? But I really want you to memorize it right now. Okay. So what you're really looking to do is impact how they're feeling. You should say how they're feeling. You want to impact how they're feeling about, you know, the next part. The other thing you want to do with new representatives is you definitely want to give them direction. And I think it's always more powerful to say, hey, do you mind if I give you a suggestion? I've never had someone say no to that. Okay. And so it's important to, to, to get their buy-in, if you will, of the suggestion that you're about to make to them. So, hey, can I give you a suggestion? You know, uh, you know, the reason you're thinking you're going to run out of names is because we need to work on it is because you don't have enough names or the reason you think you're not going to do well in this push is because you don't have a lot of names. If I gave you a thousand names to call, do you think you can book 40 demos? Yeah. Well, look here, my job is to help you come up with more names. And Mike's, Mike King's talk, his message that you had sent to you on email. Again, I'm telling you, it is a fantastic message that if I were you, I would actually write it out word for word so that way you can help people come up with more names, okay? 
The other thing you want to do is you want to help them think of like, who are the next 10 to 20 people that you want to call? And I often ask them like, Hey, tell me about this person. Tell me about this Kyle Smith. Well, you know, he's, he's, he's my neighbor. Right. And does Kyle have kids? Yeah. He's got, he's got one kid. Great. And by the way, does Kyle have a good job? Yeah, he does. Does his wife work? Yeah, she has a good job. Oh, okay. That's a great person to do a demo for. Right. Someone that has two income, a double income, and they have a, a child or more, like that's a good person to do a demo for. Hey, tell me about this Mike Muriel guy. Right. And this was, let's say, back in my 20s. Well, he's he's 27, right? He lives, he's single and uh, he's got a good job. Well, that's probably someone I wouldn't I wouldn't do a demo for. Look, when I was 27 and single, I ordered out so many meals, it was ridiculous. So just like you're just trying to help them think about their next 10 or 20 people that they're going to call. And then, hey, can I give you a suggestion? Can you make those calls today? And can you call as many as you can in one shot? Right? Can I give you a suggestion? I, I'd like you to go to the next phone jam. And let me tell you why, right? Earlier on the handout, I, I wrote down feel, felt, found. Look, I know how you feel, right? I, I, I don't like phoning either. But, you know, a, lo a lot of people have felt that way. In fact, th that is probably more common than it is less common. But what they found is by going to a phone jam, it's like forced accountability. It's like going to the gym. You know, when I go to the gym, you know what happens? I work out. You know why? Because everyone there is working out. But at the gym that I go to, there's a television. So I could, I guess, theoretically, just sit there and watch TV. I mean, I do that at home sometimes. But why don't I do that? Because it would be really weird to not be working out at the gym. And so that's what we want you to do at a phone jam. When you show up to a phone jam, you're watching everyone else's phone. They're not listening to you. They're making their own phone calls. What I found was being at home, there were so many distractions that stopped me from phoning. So my advice to you, if, if you don't mind, um, I'm going to encourage you to be at the next phone jam. Hey, can I suggest that you go field training if you're not getting the result that you want? You know, oftentimes, and this is one's a really good, good, important thing. Oftentimes, it's just one simple thing that's happening that you're not doing or that you are doing that's stopping you from getting the normal result. All right. In fact, I've got five demos tomorrow. Can you come field training with me? Like you want to be like the older brother or older sister to all your representatives. Like, hey, I'll show you the way, right? Like the, the manager is kind of like mom and dad, right? But you're like the older brother who's, you're going to show them older sister. You're showing them the way, right? Um, give them an assignment. Hey, I, I don't have a lot of time right now. Again, your PCs, anytime you talk to someone, should be less than 30 minutes. You're not trying to solve everything. And keep in mind, like, it's okay to ask them to do some, like, at-home study. So, hey, one of the things we, we covered was, you know, closing, but there's some great talks on Vector Connect. In fact, here's a great talk. One of the things that's going to help you with closing is knowing the first five pieces of the, of the sample kit, or I'm, I'm sorry, the first five pieces of the homemaker. Those are most of the orders are the first five pieces. But here's what I really want you to do. I want you to really study the next five pieces, <clears throat> because if you know the next five pieces really well, you sell more sets. Okay. So at the end of the day with new representatives, just help them make a plan. Right? We talked about that, right? So paint the vision, right? We talked about making a plan and then overcoming obstacles. And that was part of the, the PQ message. Obviously, again, I did this in reverse order, but, but give them vision for the next couple of days. Most new representatives, they're not thinking about an entire summer. They're thinking, am I going to quit this week or not? Think about yourself when you first started. You know, maybe you were like, I'm going to see how this goes to the end of my fast start. I know for me, I was just like, you know, I'm going to see how this goes. And if I don't like it, I'm going to quit and I'll do my lifeguarding job. So I think it's okay just to say, hey, let's just talk about the next week or let's talk about the next few days, All right? How many demos do you think you can do? Let's take a look at your schedule. So walk through their schedule with them. How many, de like, what are your other things that you want to do in life? All right, let's put in the team meeting. Let's put in Champions Club. And now let's put in when you want to do your demos. 
And in order to do demos, you need to, do, you need to phone. So let's put in phone time. So those are the things you always want to put into their schedule. You always want to put in their other life. You want to put in like team meetings and champions club. Then you want to put in demos and then you want to put in phone time. So that's like helping them have some vision and a plan. And then say, look, it looks like you have time for 10 appointments. Most representatives sell on six or seven and most representatives sell on an average $300. So let's call, let's call it two to $400. If you have six to seven sales and you sell two to four hundred dollars, you're going to sell uh, what twelve hundred to uh, four hundred times seven is uh, twenty hundred. You're going to sell somewhere between twelve hundred to set twenty eight hundred. So that's what painting vision is. All right, let me explain to you. Right now, you're at twenty percent. That means you're going to make two hundred forty dollars to four hundred eighty dollars for the ten appointments. So what you're doing is you're painting vision for that, all right? And if you just keep doing this, you know, good things are going to happen. Now, when you're working with more advanced representatives, again, what you want to do is you, you could probably give a little bit less direction if, if they're getting a good result. If they're getting a good result, it's more about the, the, the vision and the support and the, and the planning. All right. So for me, again, with a more advanced representative that, that's not getting a result, it's going field training. Now, if they are getting a result, but their average order size is average and you have a representative who has like a $500 average order size, I'd say, hey, you know what? Can I make a suggestion? Sam has a great average order size. Sam's average order is six or $700. Can I suggest that you go field training with him? Because I know you're, you're getting good results but wouldn't it be cool if you can get better results? And I did that with uh, Siggy Steve. Some of you know Steve Zhang. He sold uh, 300,000 last year. And he was telling me, he does like eight demos a week and he was telling me his average order size. And I said, do you know that there are people in the company that have a better average order size than that? I go, have you ever considered going field training with them? Well, Steve had already sold like $150,000 that year. And so for me to suggest that to him, you'd think that that's like a little controversial. But I said, look, how would you like to sell twice as much in the same amount of time? And he's like, I'd like that. And I was like, well, then why don't you go field training with someone who has a better average order size? One of the things you want to do here is be more directive in how you support people. So again, Vector Connect Talks. And, and, and it, Vector, listening to Vector Connect Talks is going to help you be a better uh, better manager and help you be more effective at working with reps. You know, another way that you support advanced representatives is, is by encouraging them to go to conferences. You know, one of the nice things about the way that conferences are today, for those of you that started in, in 2020, you've never attended a live conference. But prior to 2020, we would have these live conferences. So if you lived in Bloomington, Illinois, you would drive four hours or three hours to Chicago for a conference that was two hours, and then you would drive back for three hours. You were in the car more than you were actually at the conference at times. So my advice to you is to recognize conferences are short and they're sweet, but they're really impactful, right? I think you can all recognize that you all know a lot about selling Cutco, but the last you know, two days, even though it wasn't a full day, you learned a lot of great things. So with, with more advanced representatives, they have a longer time frame. I get them thinking about the week and weekly goals and an end of summer goal. So I just simply say to advanced representatives, it's more the conversation of, hey, are you the type of rep that wants to sell 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, or 5,000 a week? So one, two, three, five. And they're usually, they're like, I don't know, especially if they're like right out of their fast start. I go, all right, well, let's take a look, you know, and you should always know how many weeks there are left of the summer. There's 15 weeks left of this summer. So if you sold 5,000 a week, that means you would sell $75,000. If you sold 3,000 a week, that means you'd sell $45,000. If you sold, you know, 2,000, right, 30,000 and, you know, 15,000 more. And then sell the benefits. And I didn't write that on there, but always sell the benefits. Well, let's talk about the benefits of selling $75,000. Well, you would make X number of dollars. You know, I don't know exactly what that is off the top of my head, but it's some serious cash. Let's also talk about how that would impact your resume. 
Let's also talk about how I'm going to call it the awesome factor. Like how awesome would that be on your resume to say, I sold $75,000 worth of knives to people. It'd be pretty awesome, right? Let's talk about selling 30,000 and you just kind of keep dropping down. And then you might land at 15,000. Well, hey, you know, right now you don't believe that you can sell 15,000. And what's cool is let's set that as a goal. So right now, let's focus you on the process of selling 1,000 this week. And so what are the behaviors that are, get, that are gonna get you that? Well, you probably, to sell 1,000, you need to have at least three orders. Let's just say five, okay? So in order to get and just and reverse engineer things with people. In order to get five orders, how many demos should you do? Well, you definitely need more than five, right? Or five or more. Let's focus you on 10. Over the next seven days, do we have spots for you to do 10 appointments? Let's show me your schedule. And just, this is where screen sharing is great on Zoom. And most kids in college, you know, or on their summer break or winter break, you know, they have nothing going on. Hey, go ahead and put in whatever you want to put in. If it's workout or boyfriend or girlfriend or family time, go ahead and put it in. And they're like, uh, I don't have anything. Sounds great. Can I make a suggestion to you? I would do a demo every night before you go out with your friends. And I would do demos on Saturdays. Those are your best demos. Okay. Because you have the husband and wife together and you're going to sell more. Okay. And Hey, let me ask you lastly, is it okay if I push you? Most people say yes to that. Okay. And by the way, I'm not going to push you to like, you know, you scream uncle, right? <laughs> I'm going to push you though, to hit what you say you're going to do. So at the end of the week, here's how I want us to look at this. We failed if you didn't do 10 demos. So you're going to check in with me. I know you call, you know, Dane for PDI every day, but I want you to check in with me. Like I'm going to be your personal trainer and I'm going to help you get over the edge. All right. Okay. Some other things again, ask them, Hey, what do you want to see happen? Right. What do you want to sell next week or this month or, you know, this campaign? All right. On PDI, it's, you know, it's a quick phone call. Some of you will be doing PDI. It's just some quick rapport. So I like to have nicknames for people. That's a, that's a, that's a great way of, ha- of building rapport with people. Okay. We, there was a guy, I remember we used to call him Jacob the snake of, it was a silly, it was, it was just like a silly, uh, you know, silly nickname that we gave him, but he loved it. Right. Um, you know, build rapport, have a nickname, you know, how are you? No, actually, how are you doing? Oh, I'm actually, you know, right. Uh, I think it's also really easy to build rapport by giving them a compliment. Hey, I want to, th- or, or expressing gratitude. Hey, thanks by the way, for calling in every day. I love talking to you. And I love the fact that I never have to call you. When you do that, guess what happens? They will call you back. So whatever, whatever you want repeated, recognize that. So if you want someone calling in every day, thank them for calling in every day. If you want someone to get on the phone, thank them for that. Hey, thanks for getting on the phone, by the way, just now. I really appreciate that you followed up and followed through on that. Of course, on PDI, you want to get info, like how much you sell, what was your CPO? And you can get that on Vector Connect, but I want people to know where they're at. You know, how many demos do you want to do today, tomorrow, and the next day? Those are great, uh, great things to always ask. And then again, ask for permission. Like, hey, can I make a suggestion? I notice you have zero today, zero tomorrow, but you want to do two today and two tomorrow. Can I suggest that you hop on the phone? And again, you don't do that every day. Sometimes it's like, you know what I'm going to tell you to do, right? Yeah, get on the phone. Of course, yeah. You ready to do this? Sounds good. All right, let's crush this, man. All right, let's crush this. You got this, right? Call me back after you're done. Okay, and the reason I want you to call me back is I want to high five you over the phone. And again, if you high five them over the phone, they're going to feel better. And reps that feel better produce better results. Any human that feels better produces better results. So check back in with them. In PCs, again, always no more than 30 minutes. You are not trying to solve every problem in the world for this representative, right? Even though you're a really talented person, don't try to solve everything. It's really about, number one, about building rapport. Hey, let's take a look at how are you? How are you feeling about the job? These are great questions. How are you feeling about the job? 
how's mom and dad feeling about the job? How's your boyfriend, what girlfriend feeling about the job, right? Those are some simple questions, okay? You don't ask all of them every time you PC them. But again, you know, that changes for people over time. So another way, again, to build rapport is, hey, I want to thank you, by the way, for being a leader on our team. You know, you're not, the, you're not a leader in the sense that you sell the most, but you're a leader in that you're always on time. You're a leader in that you're always engaged. I notice you're always throwing stuff in the chat. Like Gerald, for instance, thanks for being a leader by being totally engaged. I can tell you're super focused in our meetings, all right? You want to solve the pressing challenge. And the way to find out the pressing challenge is think about a doctor checking for vitals. So every time I go to the doctor, right, they hand you the cup, right? We know what you do in the cup. They take my blood. They measure my heart rate. They do an EKG because I'm older than you guys. I don't know if they do that for you. Right. When I go to the dentist, what do they do? They like check each tooth, right? They do an x-ray because they're just checking to see what are the possible problems. And here are the only possible problems with representatives that you really want to be checking. How many demos did you do last week? How many were sales? What their average order size was and how many names they have. So if they, you know, did less than 10 demos, it's probably that they don't have enough names or that they're not, you know, executing their schedule. If they're not having a higher than 60% selling, they're probably not dropping down well, All right? If their average order size is below 300, they're probably not good with the like list, right? And if they don't have a lot of names, you need to do the chicken list, talk with them. Right. So again, empathize. Hey, I totally understand how you feel. I remember calling on people and I was like, oh my gosh, this person's going to hate me for calling them. Right. And you know what? I remember calling this one lady. She was a secretary where I used to work. I barely knew her and I called her. Guess what? She bought a homemaker. You know, I remember calling this one lady that I had met like one time and I called her and I was super like, she's going to be mad at me. She wasn't. She was like, oh my gosh, how's your mom doing? Right. And it's so like, think about this, like moms and dads, all they do all day long is talk about their kids. Right. What have I told you about one of my kids? Right. How many of you know that my son plays hockey? Right? It's because I've mentioned it a bunch of times already. Right. And we don't even work together on a daily basis. Imagine, right. <laughs> Imagine how often people talk about their kids. Right. Especially, you know, so, so just help them understand that like people that you work with or people that you go to church, these are great people to, you know, do demos for, you know, your job in a PC is to remind them how good they can be. Right. Like, like John was talking about is it's like, help them see the person that they can be. It's, just, it's, it's like shaping their feelings. So again, what do you want to do? Walk through their week. Let's check off the non-vector stuff that you want to get done this week. All right. You want to work out. Sounds great. Right? You want to go to church. Sounds great. Yeah, have a date with your girlfriend. Sounds great. I want to hang out with my buddies every night. Sounds great. What time does that start? It's not you, you don't hang out with your buddies starting at 5 p.m., right? It's like 10 o'clock, right? Okay, great. Well, now we have demo time. And then you put the demo time in. Well, to do demos, what do you need? You need phone time and you put the phone time in. Right. And then after that, you help them understand the importance of being at Champs Club, the weekly team meeting, and conferences. All right, I'll wrap up here in two minutes, Kyle. Sorry about that. But uh, the next thing is just give them belief in themselves, even when they don't believe in themselves. It's really, really important to give belief in people. Hey, let me tell you why I think you'll do well. You're better than this rep who's a good friend of mine when he was, right? That's why I give you stories like I sold $11,000 my first fall as a manager, right? You can't get any worse than that, Okay. Uh, with the check-in call, if they call in in the middle of the day, just, hey, how are you feeling about the job? How are you feeling about things? Do you have your 10 to call? All right, let's make a quick plan for the next 24 hours. Sounds great. When you go field training, here's just a couple of quick last points here. Pre-frame it. Hey, the best case scenario is that I have a no sale and no recommendations. Because what you're going to do is you're going to learn how to drop down and how to be professional, even if they're kind of mean. All right. And then when you're doing the demo, just stick mainly to the manual. In other words, don't add in like the advanced, you know, jujitsu that you learned at some conference, right? And again, don't be afraid to move to a like list and really show them how to do a like list. Most representatives don't know how to do a like list. 
That's why they don't sell. The last couple of tips here, you know, if you want to get better at all of this management and, and, and et cetera, read books about leadership or working with people or psychology or sales, anything that's going to help you along the way. You know, sometimes you just need to connect them to someone else. Hey, you know what? You remind me a lot of Sophie Goodman. You know, you should talk to Sophie. She's great at working with reps. And now, again, not just other AMs, but other representatives and even other representatives in other offices, right? Always build people up. And the bottom line is you've got this. You know how to be a good human to other people and you know how to sell Cutco more than they do, right? So the bottom line is just give them your best and you'll never be, uh, be disappointed when you're working with representatives. Thanks, Kyle. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Mike.